Hi, I'm Mike Marin, and in this video, we'll discuss the use of the apply function in R. Essentially, the apply functions are a set of loop functions in R, but the main difference with apply functions is that they're more efficient than a for loop. By that, I mean that they require far fewer lines of code, which means less room for coding error. Also, at times, they may be a little bit faster than a simple for loop. We'll demonstrate their use using the following data. This stock data here is a fictitious set of data. The columns present four different stocks, and the rows present each of their prices on one of ten different days. I've kept the data small and simple so that it will be easy for us to follow exactly what we are doing with this data in R. You'll notice that row 7, column 2 of this data has a missing value. I've included that so I can demonstrate what happens with missing values and one way we can address these in R. You can find links to this data and the R script used in the video description below. We will make use of the apply function. To access the help menu, you can enter a question mark in front of the word apply, or you can search apply in the help search window. You'll see that the apply function has three main components. X is the object we would like to apply some function to. Margin specifies the margins it will be applied over. That is, if it would be applied to rows or columns, with a value of 1 indicating rows and 2 indicating columns. Fun is the function that we would like to apply. And the dot 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 is where we specify any other arguments that need to be passed along to the function that we are calling for in the apply statement. We'll look at the use of this as we work through some examples. Let's consider calculating the mean price of each of the stocks over the 10 days. Here, we would like to calculate the mean of each of the columns. To do so, we will apply the mean function to the columns of the object stock data. So we tell R that the object to apply to is stock data, the margin that we'd like to apply to are the columns, or margin 2, and the function to apply is the mean. So let's enter this command here. You can notice that an NA is returned for the mean of stock number 2, and that's because day number 7 had a missing value for stock 2. We can ask R to remove any missing values when calculating the mean by including the na.rm equals true argument. This argument is passed along to the mean function. We can see when we submit that here, we now get the mean for stock number 2, removing the missing value. It's also worth noting that it's not always advisable to just ignore or remove missing values. Just a quick reminder that we can store these in a new object if desired. Here, we can store this in an object called AVG, and then if we enter AVG in R, it returns the mean stock prices for us. You can also take note that we don't actually need to type in the X, margin, and fun, as long as we enter things in that order. We can see that happening here. I always recommend including these until you're more comfortable with the commands in R and their default values and default orderings. Now, a quick note on a specialized apply function to calculate the means of each column. We can also make use of the call means command. This does the exact same thing as we were just doing, except it's a little bit faster in R, as it's essentially an apply function that has been optimized for calculating the column mean, and it's had all of the extra baggage that comes along with the apply command removed. Similarly, there is a row means command for calculating the row wise mean. We can, of course, apply all sorts of different functions. For example, we could calculate the maximum stock price for each of the stocks using the max function. Let's take a look at that here. Again, this is going to find the maximum within each column. We may wish to find percentiles for the stock price. Let's take a look at getting the 20th and the 80th percentile for each of the stocks or each of the columns. To do so, we can make use of the quantile function, and we can send this the additional arguments of probs telling it we would like the probability of 0.2, or the 20th percentile, and 0.80, or the 80th percentile. We could also use the apply function to create a plot for each of the columns. Here, we're going to apply the plot function, and I'm going to send the additional argument type equals L to have R produce a line plot. Let's take a look at that one. And we'd see here, it's actually produced four separate plots, one for each of the stocks. We can also send the plot function some additional arguments, such as titles, axes, labels, and so forth. Let's take a quick look at also sending it a title, an X label, and a Y label. We can see the plots look a little bit nicer here. 
We could also make use of something like the paste command to have the title appear as stock 1, stock 2, stock 3, and stock 4, although use of the paste command is a topic for a separate video, so we'll leave that aside for now. For the sake of completeness, let's also take a quick look at applying a function to the rows of this data. Let's calculate the sum of all the stocks for each of the 10 days. To do so, we're going to apply the sum function to rows of this data. Here we specify the margin equals to 1. And as we saw before, there is a specialized command for calculating sums and means of rows or columns. So we can make use of the row sums command line here. As noted before, this does essentially the same thing as we just did with an apply statement, except it'll be a little bit faster in R. You don't notice the difference here, but for much larger data sets, you will notice that the row sums command is going to be a little bit faster than the general apply function. We can think of each of these days sums as being a total value of the market for that day. So we may wish to make a line plot of these. To do so, we can simply use the plot command to plot these and specify that we'd like the points to be joined using a line. So let's take a look at doing that here. And we're also going to give the plot a Y label, an X label, as well as a title. And we can add in some nice colored points for each of the day's total market value. You could, of course, get carried away with this. My intention here is to introduce the use of the apply function to you. I'm sure you can imagine applying all sorts of functions to rows or columns of a data set. Where things get really interesting is in creating your own custom functions to do your own specialized tasks and then applying these using an apply statement. Writing functions is a topic for a separate video. I hope this video has given you the tools you need and the confidence to make use of the apply command in R. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, visit our website, and check out our other instructional videos.